Hi and welcome to this video on why you don't have a high converting sales funnel and of course how to fix it. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien. I'm an online marketing and social media coach and I help you move your most aligned clients from discovering who you are online through to investing with you using storytelling, strategy and systems. And today, of course, we're talking about sales funnel and those systems that we have in our business to be able to create a consistent, predictable flow of clients coming to our business, leads and clients. And what happens is a lot of people come to me and tell me they have funnel shame. They've started to set up a sales funnel, but unfortunately it's not uh, working, it's broken, they feel, and that it needs to be fixed. So that's what we're going to focus on today. And of course, at the end of this call, um, I'll share a little bit more about um, how you might be able to have your sales funnel audited so that you can see where the holes are in your, um, in your funnel. So let's dive into the seven key areas that you could be looking into. So number one is you don't have clarity around your ideal client. Now this is a really big one and I think uh, a lot of people actually overlook it. Now if you do any course or program, one of the first things that, um, or business course or program, uh, one of the first things that they ask you to do is to look at your ideal client. And I know that we do this process over and over again, but I continually do it for myself because my ideal client keeps evolving um, and the picture keeps getting clearer and clearer of who that person is as I continue to work with people and realize what I like and um, don't particularly like it in, in certain um, clients. So you find out who your true ideal client is. What that allows you to do is that your messaging has more clarity. You have more empathy for the person that you're talking to. So of course your messaging um, resonates far more with that person. And also the other thing to really look at is that you start creating um, offers, opt-in offers, offers and paid offers as well um, that actually are more aligned with the person that you're after. So instead of um, doing a whole bunch of um, I will help sales funnels for anyone who can walk and talk and run a business. Um, instead I'm really clear on service-based businesses and coaches so that I'm, uh, I'm, when somebody reads my message and they're a service-based business or a coach, they know that I'm the one who can help them. Or, or alternatively, they're in a conversation with someone and, um, and so, you know, my sales funnel isn't working. They are already a coach or a service-based um, business. And someone says, you know what, you should be talking to Kelly. She's the one who can help you with that. Um, as opposed to when we're really generic with our messages and we tend to attract just uh, what we do is we don't actually attract anyone because people don't identify as you as the person with that really clear, distinct answer to their problem. So get really clear on who your ideal client is and really niche down so that you become the go-to person for whatever it is that you um, you deal with. So um, can really, really help you and think about who it is, who is your ideal client and how are you niching down so that when they read it, it feels like... Um, you're calling out to them specifically and they can hear it and they can feel it. Number two is your opt-in offer isn't aligned. Now we just talked about opt-in offers, but this one is similar that you're not calling out to the person that you most want to be working with. And the thing that I see most and when I work with um, in my uh, the online marketing mastermind, for example, we do a get it done day to get your sales funnel done. Now within that um, within that day, one of the biggest things that, um, that happens or the biggest aha moments that happens is that people identify that their um, opt-in is actually attracting their competitors and people who are, are trying to learn more about that subject as opposed to their ideal clients. So you end up creating an opt-in offer for your peers and not for your ideal clients. So have a little look at that, audit your opt-in offer. Is it actually what your, your ideal client wants or is it just making you look really good in front of your peers? Number three is your email sequence isn't connecting with your ideal client. So when we get really clear on who that ideal client is and we know what the piece of 
um, content is or the free opt-in that we're offering, we have a much clearer idea then of what the stories are that we need to have through that email sequence. And again, this is where I see people um, throw in just a bunch of stuff at the beginning because they want to give value um, and then they have a couple of e um, sales emails at the end and there's no real strategy behind what they're doing with those emails. So think really clearly about what is the path that gets them from the free opt-in offer through to your paid offer. How do you bridge the gap between those two? And what are the things that you need to demonstrate to that person to get them to take the next step with you? So there are some really clear um, steps that I work with, um, with clients that um, look at what are the emails that need to go in that sequence? How long does that sequence need to be and are you actually nurturing people so that you're overcoming objections you're stating your why and you're allowing them to um, know you and of course trust you as well number four is that you don't have a clear value ladder if you don't know what a value ladder is um, one of the other things that i do with clients is we look at your business ecosystem and what that is is every single free offer um, piece of content and um and, and paid offers that you actually have for your ideal client. And then we create a map around that, a high level um, holistic view of what your business looks like. So your value ladder is actually the different steps people take once they become a, a client, what is the next offer after that? And then what is the next logical offer after that? And, um, and so it continues so that you know um, that you're getting the most out of your ideal client because it's much, much easier to get um, a customer, a, a, a client to invest with you again than it is to go and spend money trying to get a new client. So you need to look at what is your value ladder? How does that work in your business and how are you um, getting people to take on the next offer in your business so that they're not just a one-off client? Number five is your sales funnel is just way too complex. Um, this is something that I see a lot of people come to me and they've got a quiz and they've got a, um, a PDF and they've got a video sequence and they've got all this stuff inside of their sales funnel and it's way too complicated and they have no way of tracking it and knowing which elements are working and which ones aren't working, which ones are converting people. So you need to start really, really simple. And it's why when you do searches for sales funnels, you'll see everybody having this really basic version of a sales funnel and it's because it's where you need to start. You need to start really um, with a clear plate um, very easy for people to understand and to follow and for you, more import importantly, to be able to, to track. And once you've tracked it and once you've got that element working, then you can add on additional pieces as you see um, that there's opportunities for things to be expanded, things to be improved, or if there's a, um, something's working really well, then you might be able to enhance that with something else as well. So start simple, try not to overcomplicate it because it will fail, um, because there's no way for you to know what's working and what's not working. Number six is there's just not enough people going through your sales funnel. And um, this is actually a big one when people come to me and they say, my sales funnel has failed, it's not working, what do I do? And I look at the analytics and there just hasn't been enough people going through at the front end to be able to get the results at the back end. So when you think about um, everybody's conversion rates, of course, are important and we've just talked about conversion, but this is where it becomes so important and why it's critical is because you need to be able to have an opt-in that is um, converting at at least 30% or more. Again, it depends on your niche. Um, because this does differ um, depending on the business. But you need to be getting people in at the, the beginning. Um, and then, of course, you need to be able to be converting them at each step as you go through. And you need to look at your conversion rates. Now, some of my clients have, have had conversion rates on their sales pages at 5 and 7%, which is quite high. Um, and, and so that's, you know, obviously working really well for them if they can then, particularly if they're spending money at the front end on Facebook, as long as it's covering the costs of um, those Facebook ads, then it's deemed a success. Um, and again, looking at the value ladder that goes after that to make sure that if it is only breaking even or if it is losing money, that you're still making money um, in the value ladder that um, progresses after that and that that is actually converting as well. 
So there are a few different things that you need to be looking at um, to make sure that you've got enough people going through because if you've only got um, a small amount at the front end, you'll never be able to know whether the back end of your sales funnel is working. So traffic is a really big issue for a lot of people and I have had clients come and say it's failing um, and the conversion rates are actually insane. Um, really, really good um, conversion rates. They just don't have enough people going through and it's really finding out um, what your conversion rates need to be to make this profitable. And number seven, of course, is that your offer isn't enticing enough or the copywriting isn't strong enough. And so that's a really key piece in this whole system. Again, a lot of people come to me, their entire system is working really well. They've got great conversion rates all the way through it, um, but they're not getting the sales. And really our, our sales funnel can look amazing at the front end and have incredible conversions. But if it's not converting into sales, then it isn't a success and that's where we need to be looking. And sometimes it is that the offer isn't quite right, that it's not what your ideal client wants and so you need to go back to the drawing board with that offer. It may be that it's not aligned to the rest of the sales funnel, that you're, you've got this sales funnel that's doing really well up until the point of the sale because the offer doesn't match the rest of the sales funnel. Could be pricing as well. And there's a lot of, um, maybe I'll do a video on pricing, but there's a lot of psychology around things that are too cheap, things that are too expensive and people's mindset around what they're prepared to pay. So there is a bit of testing that you can be doing around that pricing as well. Of course, there's also other uh, triggers that entice people to take action with you. And uh, one of the big things that I talk about and that needs to happen throughout your entire uh, sales funnel is the storytelling. What are the stories that you're telling um, in your opt-in offer, in your email sequence, and in your sales pages and any other um, elements if you're doing webinars or videos um, as well through that? What are you doing? What are the stories that you're telling that are actually getting people to say, I need this? This is the answer that I'm looking for and I trust you um, with my money and to give me um, the, the answer that I most need. So you really need to look at that offer. If everything else you can see is clearly working but the op offer isn't working, then go back to the drawing board and actually audit the offer itself and make sure that um, once that piece is perfect, then the rest of it is going to be um, going to work Obviously, if it's already working, that's all going to work seamlessly for you. And it's more about uh, getting the traffic at the front end so that you can continue to get people to go through your system so that you're getting that consistent, um, predictable flow of leads that result into clients so that you've got this system that's there all the time. And as I call it, you may have heard me say before, but it's like the insurance in your business that when life happens, that um, this system has already been set up, it's already working for you and it's bringing through um, that, that consistency for you that you need. So I hope this was really helpful. Now, if you'd like to have your sales funnel audited, if you have a bit of a sales funnel started or you have a really complex one and now you don't know what to do with it, um, please click the link um, around this video. Um, book in a time for us to chat and we can do a bit of an audit of where you're at with your sales funnel. Um, that call is a, a 30 minute call for free that can look at it. And of course, if you want some help beyond that, we can chat about that on the call as well. But I would love to see more women um, having really successful sales funnels and building that insurance into their business. So when kids are sick, when um, you know life, uh, things happen in your life where you need to drop everything to be able to attend it to something else that's going on, that um, your business doesn't suffer during that time that you have this wonderful system set up that's actually continuing to pay you regardless of what else is happening. So thank you so much for listening. Um, I really appreciate it. And um, again, click that button and book a session and we'll have a chat and, an, and a bit of an audit of your systems to see where you're at and how you can improve what you've already got. Thanks again for listening and I'll see you in the next video.